Okay, so we'll start chapter 15 today. Uh, chapter 15, just similar to chapter 14, talks about corporations, but we'll now move into a bit more depth uh, about specific journal entries and specific transactions that occur in corporations. Um, so uh, we will go into a bit more depth uh, for, for dividends, for example, and so on. Um, and chapter 15 will be uh, you know, covered in a few, a few uh, different uh, video presentations. So um, you know, you'll have lots of things to think about. So chapter 15 uh, talks about dividends, retained earnings, and uh, income reporting. So uh, we'll go into uh, the, its depth uh, as we go along the presentation. So some of the new terms that we, we will focus on in this chapter include dividends, cash dividends, stock dividends, cumulative dividends, and so on. As you can see, the list is pretty lengthy. You can uh, read this on your own. And it ends with EPS and PE ratios. So we'll definitely get into some ratios uh, in this chapter. Dividends. So what are dividends? As we talked about it in, in uh, the last chapter, dividends are basically a distribution of a company's profits once the company has decided to distribute the money after it's paid its taxes and after it has maybe uh, taken some part of that and allocated it to expansion or growth and, and paying off loans or, or those kind of objectives. So this is basically uh, shareholders receiving some part of the company's profits. Uh, they are called dividends. You know, you basically tend to have two different types of dividends. You can have preferred or common share dividends. Um, however, within those dividends, there are two different categories. They can be in the form of cash or uh, shares, for common shares only. Preferred share, uh, shareholders do not get preferred share dividends. They can get common share dividends if need be. We'll get into what the need is or, or the want for the company to uh, give out uh, share dividends rather than cash. But at this point, let's focus on cash dividends. A cash dividend is an equal distribution of cash to shareholders. So for example, a dollar per share. Uh, so if you have a thousand shares, you would get a thousand dollars. If you have five shares, you would get five dollars because it's a dollar per share. For a cash dividend to occur, a company must have these three things. Number, four, number one, it must have retained earnings. So what are retained earnings? Retained earnings are basically um, basically an addition or uh, basically accumulation of all the net incomes or losses in the past. So from the beginning of the company. So as they make profit or loss, uh, you know, they are, the net income is closed uh, into retained earnings at the end of every period. And what happens is retained earnings is accumulated as years go by. So if you have incomes going into it, retained earnings would increase. If you have losses going into it, retained earnings would decrease. So you must have retained earnings. Number two, you must have actual cash to pay. So if you don't have enough cash, then you're not going to be able to pay cash dividend. And number three, you must declare these dividends. So once you have declared these dividends, there are three dates which are extremely critical. So you can see from this slide, the dates are declaration date, record date, and payment date. Declaration date is when you actually have declared the dividends. As soon as you've declared the dividends, it has become a liability because you will now uh, be expected to pay it out to all the dividend, all the shareholders. And the shareholders are expecting this dividend, so right away it becomes a liability. So what you do is you debit retained earnings because you must have retained earnings to pay dividends, so you have to take it out of retained earnings, and you credit dividends payable. So, um, as I said, it becomes a liability. Dividends payable is a short-term liability, and once you are debiting retained earnings, you, you can see that retained earnings goes down because retained earnings is an equity account, and it should have a credit balance. So when you debit it, it goes down. And this is on the date of the declaration. So once you declare that this, the dividends will occur, uh, you must uh, create this journal entry. Then there's the record date. Record date simply implies that whoever owns shares on this date will actually get the dividends. So uh, let's say you declare dividends on the 10th of May. 
that becomes your declaration date and you say that on the 20th of May whoever owns the shares will receive those dividends. The 20th of May becomes your record date. Uh, that is, you know, basically that gives you a few days to make sure that you know who the people are uh, who will receive these dividends. And then there's the actual payment date. Payment date is usually a couple of days after the record date, maybe 23rd, 24th. This is when you actually receive the money. So the checks are mailed or the money is transferred to your bank account. And then there is a journal entry, of course, on the payment date. There is no entry on the record date because that is simply to explain who will receive those dividends. On the payment date, you basically reverse the liability. So you no longer have this liability. So you debit dividends payable and you credit cash because you are now paying this dividend out, either through check or through a bank transfer. So these three dates are critical and you can see two of them have journal entries, one of them do not, does not. So you can see declaration date, debit, retained earnings, credit dividends payable, record date, there is no entry, and then payment date, de debit dividends payable, credit cash. So cash dividends must be first paid to preferred shareholders. As you know uh, from previously, the preferred shareholders have this priority, this preference over common shares. If preferred, shareholder, preferred shares are cumulative, any dividends in arrears must be paid to preferred shareholders prior to common shareholders receiving their dividends. So you, you, you know this from, from prior as well, from previously, so you understand that Preferred shareholders have this preference. Um, stock dividends. Why would a company pay stock dividends? Well, perhaps they don't have enough cash. So what happens is, if they don't have enough cash, because remember cash is a requirement for you to pay the cash dividend out, then you know you pay stock dividends. Stock dividends are basically in the form of shares. So what you're doing is you're telling the shareholders that listen, we, we, we would like to pay you dividends, we would like to give you a part of the profit, however we do not have enough cash, so what we're going to do is we're going to give you some more shares. So in this case, uh, stock dividends result in a decrease in retained earnings because you still have to take it out of retained earnings, but it increases common shares. Uh, the actual value of the, the actual value of the common shares that uh, are being put to use. So in the end, total shareholders' equity remains the same, and book value per share changes uh, and it goes down. So you can see uh, from this um, from this uh, slide, you can see that it also has three dates: declaration, record, and payment. However, the journal entry is a bit different. You are debiting retained earnings because you must take it out of retained earnings, but you're crediting stock dividends payable. You're not crediting uh, dividends payable, you're crediting stock dividends payable. It's a different type of uh, uh, payable, different type of uh, liability. And then record date, there's no journal entry. And then you can see on the payment date, you are reversing that journal, uh, sorry, reversing that uh, liability, meaning debit, stock, dividends payable but you are crediting common shares. You're not crediting cash. When you credit common shares, common shares goes up. So you can see that in this case, uh, both journal entries are, are basically similar, but they are different because stock dividends imply that you are increasing the number of shares that you that you are issuing, but in di cash dividend, you are only issuing cash. So um, I will stop it here uh, and we'll continue uh, with the next uh, part of the presentation tomorrow. Thank you.